Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Alana, this is Evie, and this is me opening up the Gallant reading vlog. So, V.E. Schwab, or Victoria Schwab as she is also known as, is a huge American author who has an extensive backlist of books, but her latest release is Gallant and that will be releasing March 2022, which is now for you guys, but not for me, because I was lucky enough to get an advanced reader copy of this one an e arc so on my tablet from Edelweiss. So full disclosure, I have read this one before it has been released. So as usual, advanced reader copies can change small things, big things, whatever from the final copy, but most of the time things stay the same. So this is my experience reading the early copy. I'll also be pre-ordering this in hardcover because I have a Victoria Schwab shelf all up here, that way, and that way, and as you can see, my girl gets put into hardcovers. So I thought I would start this vlog off by reading you the blurb of the book because my brain cannot start a book until I know what it is about. And I should also mention that I am keeping this reading vlog spoiler free, so if you haven't read the book but you want to know a little bit about it or my first impressions, that type of thing, all the raw footage and emotion, that's in here. That's happening here. Okay, so in this one, Victoria Schwab spins a dark original tale about our world, full of life, a world that mirrors it, haunted by death and the manner that stands between them. The secret garden meets Crimson Peak in this novel, perfect for readers of Holly Black and Neil Gaiman. Confession time. I have not read The Secret Garden or Crimson Peak, so I'm sure that will mean a lot to a lot of people to have that comparison chucked in there. But it means nothing for me. All I, I have heard of those books, I just haven't got there. But I'm thinking like spooky in between world type vibe, which is very on brand for V.E. Schwab because she writes doorways to other worlds and darkness and death and morality really well. That is her brand. So in this one we follow Olivia Pryor who has grown up in Maryland School for Girls and all she has of her past is her mother's journal which seems to unravel into madness. Then a letter invites Olivia to come home to Gallant. Yet when Olivia arrives no one is expecting her but Olivia is not about to leave the first place that feels like home. It doesn't matter if her cousin Matthew is hostile or if she sees halved form ghouls haunting the hallways. Olivia knows that Gallant is hiding secrets and she is determined to uncover them. When she crosses a ruined wall at just the right moment, Olivia finds herself in a place that is gallant, but not. The manor is crumbling, the ghouls are solid, and a mysterious figure rules over all. Now Olivia sees what has unraveled generations of her family and where her family may have come from. Olivia has always wanted to belong somewhere, but will she take her place as a prior, protecting our world against the master of the house, or will she take her place beside him? Okay, initial thoughts from rereading that blurb because I am three chapters into this. Very on brand for this author. So before we dive into the vlog portion of this, I just want to quickly touch base with where I'm at with this author. I have read a lot of her books, which is why I'm so excited for this one. I am super hyped for Gallant to come out. I want that to be made abundantly clear from the start. It's one of my most anticipated books for 2022. So, so far I have read the first book in the City of Ghosts middle grade series. I have read the two books in The Dark Vault. I have read Our Dark Duet and This Savage Song, which is actually the first one and then the second one. I have read The Shades of Magic first trilogy. I've read The Near Witch, The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue and the absolute pinnacle and my favourite, I have read Vicious and Vengeful. So in total, I have read 12 books from this author in the past and the majority I have really enjoyed. There were a few misses there for me, but that's a lot of books to have read from the same author and majority of it, yes, I have enjoyed. I will say her previous release as of filming this video, The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, I know that book took the world by storm and I really wanted to love it because it sounded like everything that I do love, like the devil making deals, immortality, a twisted little catch to the deal. I thought I would love it and unfortunately I 
didn't, I think I ended up giving it about three stars. I will still keep my copy on the shelf though because it is beautiful and I still can appreciate the story and what that story does for other people. But wasn't my favorite. So I am a tiny bit apprehensive for Gallant. I want to say that I am 20% apprehensive but 80% pure hyped. So that's where we are. And just as a little aside, we have the UK cover and the US cover. I think I'm going to order the hardcover of probably the UK one. Might be easier for me to source being here in Australia, but also just looking at them here on my phone while you have them here. Mm, to be honest, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Hopefully I make that decision within this vlog. So initial thoughts before we jump into the rest of the vlog. Like I said, I'm about three or four chapters into this so far and I am very pleased to say that I am loving this so far. So we have Olivia who is a character kind of on the outer of a lot of different things. The other people at the school for girls treat her as other because she is at this stage. I think I would assume mute so she can't speak or she doesn't speak. There are some prejudices around her not being able to speak. Some of the matrons, I think that's the word for them, treat her like she is stupid even though she can fully comprehend what is going on around her and what they are saying to her but refuses to use the chalkboard which they have kind of thrust upon her. One of the previous matrons has taught her some sign language and I love that inclusion because it's all about how she can finally speak and use words and things like that but nobody else now having had that person leave no one else now converses with her like that so she's very alienated and there's this loneliness that comes to her because she cannot communicate with the people around her because a they don't want to try and b she is on the outskirts of the clicks and things like that. At this early stage within the novel, I feel like the time period has not been clearly distinguished and I think that's intentionally done. I think it gives the author more room to play with and to bring that mystical element in instead of thrusting like cell phones in our faces and things like that. There's none of that at this stage. And of course, already we have Victoria Schwab's very lyrical prose. And every time that I start a V.E. Schwab book, I just, melt because it feels comforting and like I'm coming home when I read this author because her prose is just so beautiful and it really does sing on the page. So there's already been some beautiful moments and I am sure there will be a lot more as well. We've also had the introduction of ghouls and how Olivia can see them, how they do appear to her a little bit transparent but that nobody else around her can see them. There's also been a few little snippets from her mother's journal and I really like this. It's giving it a very dark and ominous type feeling. <sighs> And I just am very excited to see where this goes. I'm trying not to get overhyped, but this book is going to be very hyped everywhere already. Like she's a very popular author. So I'm trying to keep it here. Not entirely working, but we shall see. Also, I have seen on her social media, the author say that this will be a standalone. I love a good self-contained story. I also love a series, but I love when an author will just come out and commit to something like that too. So this will be a standalone, much like Addie LaRue was and The Near Witch. So we'll see where it slots in, in comparison to those ones. Okay, so I hope you're ready to come along on this ride with me while I read one of my most anticipated reads of the year. Fingers crossed that it lives up to my expectation, but also completely understandable if it doesn't. Let's go. Hello, random messy head check-in to say that we have hit part two already. I am up to chapter six, I think. I feel weird not having the physical book to flick through, but yes, we're already up to part two. I'm still really enjoying this. She's arrived at Gallant, things are getting creepier, it's suspenseful, and I'm loving the ride so far. We've also just met Matthew, and my instant first thought is that I hate him, and either I feel like we're either going to end up empathizing with him if we learn something, I don't know, this is not a spoiler because this is just me speculating, but either he'll get a redemption arc, we'll end up empathizing with him, or he's just gonna be a butthead. 
for the entire book. I'm keen to see which one of those three will be it. But yes, Olivia has just arrived at Gallant. We've also had some cut-ins from a shadowy figure and I am keen. I think that person came up in the blurb of the book that I read out at the start, but I want to know what happens. So it's going well. Very lyrical still, signature V.E. Schwab prose writing style, and we're going to continue on. Fingers crossed that I am still this hyped in the next check-in. At the moment, it's a four and a half stars out of five, but I'm very early on in the piece. But here's to chapter six, chapter five. Did I say five or six? Part two, let's go. Hello, and welcome to another check-in. I, again, have a messy bun, but that is the reality of the reading life. So I thought I would quickly jump in and give a further update on my reading progress. So I think I have hit part three now. Last time I checked in, I had reached chapter six. I'm now up to chapter 14, so. I am flying through this book. Also, I don't know if this will show up, but yeah, the illustrations in this are gorgeous and I love the way that they're explained as well and integrated into the story. So yeah, I'm up to chapter 14 and I feel like I am about halfway through. I did Google how many pages this was and I think it was like 350. That was beautiful, thank you. Anyway, on the eARC edition, it's saying that I'm up to 113 of 257, so I don't know if that's accurate or not. Like I said earlier, I like having the physical thing in front of me to gauge where I'm up to, but it's fine. And I know that I mentioned Matthew in the last check-in, and I said there is three different paths that V.E. Schwab could be taking us down with him. He is a tortured soul, essentially. So we'll see where that goes, but I feel like I already kind of know how I'm going to end up feeling about him and essentially Olivia is still in the dark about a lot of stuff to do with her mysterious family so we're just going through and we're learning that. I love how the dream world bleeds into the real world in this as well. The line between reality and dreams is blurring which is interesting. We also have the introduction of one of V.E. Schwab's main themes that she always brings up in her books and that is death. I'm not going to say how but that's in there. And then we get the image of the two houses intertwined like in the US cover. We get that introduced within the story too. And I loved how that was described and integrated and we haven't gotten to the bottom of it yet, but that has cropped up in this too. I always love those little Easter eggs of when a book's title is mentioned or when the front cover makes sense because you get to that part in the book and how that all intertwines. And there was just some moments that I did highlight in this copy because they were beautiful. Now I know that things could change from this e-arc to the finished copy but I'm just going to read out a few lines because they really did speak volumes in just the beautiful way that they were put together. So we have one scene where Olivia is walking down a hallway lined with family portraits and she's having this reflection moment on seeing herself in these portraits when she's never known her family before. So it goes, it is so strange to see her face reflected, distorted, echoed in so many others. Here is the line of her cheek and the curve of her mouth. Here is the angle of her eye and the slope of her nose. The details scattered like seeds across the portraits. She has never had a family and now she has a tree. And there's this beautiful imagery that the author refers back to a couple of times, which is a family tree and just the imagery surrounded by that. So like the branches of that tree, the seeds that are sown and all of that. I just love that and I wanted to mention that because I found that beautiful. That's where I say that V. E. Schwab is a favorite author because the way that she makes words work is incredible. It's just sometimes it ends up a little overdone but so far in this one I'm loving I'm loving the lyrical way of it. I also love when one character is saying to another about words and the weight that they can carry. So they say, put the right words into the world, never know what you'll catch. For some reason, 
that just really caught me. Maybe it's because I one day hopefully aspire to write something successful. I'm thinking maybe that's why that really hit me, that one line, but I just really liked that. So yeah, I'm currently up to part three, which is titled Things Unsaid. Part four is called Behind the Wall, and it looks like I've got three parts to go from here. So I think it's safe to say I'm nearly at halfway. That's the general feeling that I'm getting at the moment with the scope of the story. And yes, I'm still really enjoying this. I have seen the Schwab say, a couple of times just in like live Q and A's and author interviews that the start of her stories are always very slow and it's something that she struggles with and that she's also just kind of accepted and then they speed up. But so far I'm finding in this one that this is probably one of the quickest starting stories of hers. So I maybe that's another reason why I'm just instantly really loving this or the fact that it's intriguing and the premise of it is something that I really enjoy looking into. With the role of family and family trees and death and blurring the lines between reality and dreams, it's got all the good stuff in it. So yeah, that's where we're currently at. See you soon. We just got to an oh shit moment. Wow. So, not sure exactly where I am in Gallant, but I know that we must be getting close. So the EARC is saying 143 out of 257. I definitely feel like I am at this point in the story and eh. Also, are you okay? Are you right? Evie's just gonna build her nest in the background and step on me while she gets comfy. But yeah, I can't say anything because I don't want to spoil it. It's just definitely had a revelation type moment. I haven't reached the peak of the revelation yet. It's just kind of opened up. I will just say it has something to do with the illustrations in the book. So I really like that they have a higher purpose than to just make the book more beautiful. And that's all I will say. Definitely a heart in throat type situation, which is great because that's what I look for when I read books. I wanna be shocked and surprised and scared and slight panic, but not quite into anxiety. And that's nearly where we're sitting. So I'm gonna keep on reading. I'm going to continue on this very steep incline and then see if I get to the drop tonight. Let me know in the comments down below if you like this off the cuff reaction type element to the vlog or if you prefer straight thoughts and how they relate. Do you prefer Alana on a whim or do you prefer Alana when she's thought about it for a little bit? Cool. Hello, just quickly popping in to show you that sometimes I curl my hair but also I'm up to part four in this and people are gonna love this book. They're gonna love it so much. Evie's also bullying me for a walk so this was a two second check in just to say we're part way through part four. Things are happening obviously. The whole portal type fantasy thing that's happened because this is very soft portal fantasy and oh look should we go for a walk? And we're going for a walk but yeah this book I'm flying through it. I am flying through it, even though I still, oh my god, she's staring at me so intently. I'm gonna go walk Evie before she starts body slamming the walls because she needs to get the energy out right now. And I'll check in again later. This was a different backdrop because so far you have seen me in messy hair and blank walls. So, books. Wonderful. See you soon. Hello again. So, just a little quick FYI, I am now up to part six. I'm up to the last part of this book and I'm still really loving it. I'm about to head off to work, but I thought I should quickly update you before I read more of this on my break, pointing down because my e-reader is here, and probably finish it and not have updated you on some of the things that I enjoyed or picked up on or reminded me of. So during part five, I had this really cool little moment where this book gave me 
Coraline type vibes. Just a little feeling and the book's doing its own thing with it. But when Coraline opens that door, there was a certain moment where it felt like that. And I love Coraline, the movie and the book. So I really liked that inclusion. Or the, the similar feeling that I got. Another cool little moment that we got was when our main character says that she wishes that she could just go into oblivion. Or not into oblivion, but escape to a, an unknown place where nobody knows her and she could be that mysterious person who bakes their goods or whatnot. And I think that at some point in our lives, everyone has this one little thought of what if I just went somewhere else some people act on this and some people don't and i just loved that that was put in here i don't know for some reason that little thing just spoke to me obviously i'm not going to go move to a little seaside village and become a baker and blend into obscurity and oblivion that's not where i am i'm very happy where i am but just the little nod to that point in a character's journey or in someone's life where you could choose this path, the what if path of just go away from the story, but you keep on going along the story road or whatever. That sounded really weird. But again, a little moment that I enjoyed and which I feel could be relatable to some people or just shows like the character's growth and all that type of thing. I always find it's very hard to walk that line between giving you enough information to make a reading vlog worthwhile, but not getting into spoiler territory. So intentionally vague is where I try to sit, but I wanna give you enough that this is actually interesting to watch. So two little tidbits that I did enjoy. Part five is also the part where we get a lot of answers as well to mysteries and things. Again, vague, but we do get sat down and told a few stories as we lead up to the climactic point of the novel, which is definitely happening where I'm currently at. I also really like how this story is staying self-contained and small. So we are very much in gallant for most of this. And there could be whole world implications but i really like how v e. schwab is purposely keeping the story small and this circle of mystery so major props to her on that if you like a story that has a house full of mysteries as well i think you're really gonna love this one because there are ghouls and secrets within its walls and things like that i also have probably mentioned this but i also really like olivia our main character she just she is stubborn and she doesn't back down and she makes space for herself within the world. And I just love her as a character overall, really enjoying her. She's very, this is who I am. This is how I'm gonna approach this. I may wing it at times, but here we are. There's one point where something's happening and it just says, Olivia closes her eyes and holds her ground. And I think that is her to a T. So I really, really love that. So yeah. That's where I'm currently at. Uh, my copy says that I'm on page 247 of 257. So, you know, very, very close to the end and obviously still really enjoying this. So there's just a little bit more input from me on why I am enjoying this so much. I think I might actually finish this before I head to work, which is very soon. One of my most anticipated books of 2022, I will be able to say will be completed very shortly. So I'm going to go finish off my reading experience of this. And then when I come back, it will be to wrap this all up. Hello, okay, we've made it to the end of this reading vlog. Oh my God. We have coffee. We have coffee in my cute little belly tumbler. It looks like a tummy. And I love it, but coffee is definitely needed because it's been a hectic couple of weeks, which I'll explain in another another video to come. But anyway, notes. Let's do this. Let's wrap this vlog up. I am very excited to gush about this book. <laughs> so as you saw throughout this vlog, I thoroughly enjoyed this book and I think it's no surprise that I'm going to give it five stars. This was back up there to brilliant. 
for V Schwab for me. Like I said, her previous release, The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, kind of knocked it down a little bit for me, but this one, incredible. I loved it so much. I think especially having a main character like Olivia throughout just made it that much more enjoyable, obviously because she's the main one we're seeing the story through, but also just her un forgiving or how to put it more her self-awareness and her comfort in her own skin and the way that she handled situations practically and I just I loved her so much I really felt like I could stand behind her and root for her throughout this story so very very well done I would technically classify this as either contemporary fantasy or light fantasy because it's very much grounded within the real world the setting was done phenomenally well and there's not that many fantasy elements to it it's just this portal kind of thing happening and you do have that element of death coming in from above and what not to so I would say it's very light fantasy it's a good book to bridge you into fantasy if you've never read from it before and you want to start giving it a go it's very easy to consume and easy to get straight into there's no real like heavy high fantasy info dumping there's no sci-fi it's it's very palatable. If I was to describe this book in three words as well I would say eerie, intriguing and believable. Even though there is that slight fantasy aspect I could believe this story a hundred percent. The motivations that people had within it, the reactions to certain situations, all of it very believable. Eerie because there is this play with ghouls and death and that coming into it and intriguing because you do have a mystery you have a young girl who's never met her family before and she is going into this place this house this family that she has no idea about and yeah I think that's where setting really did help this book as well it was very much grounded in its surroundings and it just made the book so much stronger to have such a solid foundation upon the characters to act out upon. As for more technical things like the writing and the prose, brilliant, beautiful. I think I read out some passages throughout this vlog as well that really spoke to me and it didn't feel too overdone. I think I also said earlier that sometimes V.E. Schwab is a little bit overdone with her prose but this one felt well balanced and it just it was one that really got into my heart and I appreciate that so very much the drawings as well beautiful and also served a purpose and that is all I will say on that but yeah they are in this story for a reason and I can't wait for people to find out why I will also say that I really enjoyed the ending without going into spoiler territory there was payoff and there were also moments that had to happen and the author didn't shrink away from making them happen and I'm very thankful for that as well there were consequences to certain things and I appreciate that again this plays into the believable aspect of it 100% so yeah I really did enjoy this book as you can see here it's been on my staff picks now for the last week or two because I am closing off this vlog around publication time I'm excited to get my hands on a physical copy of this sometime soon like I said I do want to order the hardcover and I will get there I really really will it's just like I said at the start of this check-in life has been busy because we're currently in March and March is a busy month <laughs> But yes, my coffee is almost gone and I think this vlog is long enough already. So if you've stuck around this far, thank you so much for watching. Pop a ghost emoji in the comments down below or let me know what V.E. Schwab book you're looking to pick up or if you're going to pick this one up, drop that down there as well. So thank you so much for coming on this journey with me and for reading Five Star Book with me. It's been a very enjoyable experience. Don't forget to like this video if you haven't already and consider subscribing to the channel because it really does help me out. Gives me a little confidence boost and I will see you in another one. Bye. Mm -hmm.